every scene in this entire show fits very cleanly into one of two boxes. There's box A, where when the author really wants to, he can write a brilliant, intriguing, engaging plot with something to say. And then there's box B, where the author is living out their sexual fantasies. <laughs> Bonjour, Madame Imizue, uh, pour le Bleu, Bleu Banana podcast. Bonsoir, Manu. That's how far as I go? Oh, I, I thought, like, before before Liam gets into his uh, French exploits of the week, I just kick it off straight in French, in my terrible French <laughs> that's non existent. Can I just say, I never bring it up. You're always the one who's like, Liam, what's new in French this week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do believe it's us that's always just like, Bonjour, Liam. Bonsoir, <laughs> Monsieur Lyon. <laughs> so Bonsoir, bon. tout le monde. Bienvenue à Blue Banana Podcast. If you clicked on this video, you obviously know that our topic today is going to be Mushoku Tensei. I'm so confused about this show on so many levels, and actually watching it also hasn't really helped clarify it. I think it's controversial, but also it's hailed the isekai anime that managed to do what no other isekai anime managed to do so i've heard a lot of praise and complaints about this show and i'm i honestly i can't like we're gonna jump right into this today i'm sure we're gonna have lots of time for banter in like the second half and other stuff but I, i'm really curious what you guys think because to give you a bit of context, I got pestered a lot by people saying it's the best isekai anime by mm. <laughs> by like we got private friends for friends like yeah giga like was like repeatedly like no this is this is the this is the isekai grant suggested this god god did recommend it and I, I watched the first episode only and i was like oh this is just a pervy dude with like a few complexes like stalking like this is just a like a horny <laughs> isekai is what that is is that why it's the best one is that a genre horny isekai horny isekai yeah it should be it should if it if it were a genre would probably be that the main genre that a lot of stuff would go Isn't into. That the basis already? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what it is. I have yet to see one without that aspect. <laughs> Only watched the first episode. Was like, eh, this is like like soft, soft like hentai was like what my impression. And then I was like, okay, I'm not gonna really watch this. It's not in the first episode, but within like the first two or three episodes, like there's a mage masturbating in the halls. Like that is proper hentai stuff that was happening. There were definitely moments where I was feeling, this is the equivalent of someone saying, I read Fifty Shades of Grey for the plot. Yeah, for the plot. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I really like yeah, the character. so much yeah. plot. Yeah. For me, I, I watched the first episode. I was like, not what I expected when I heard Best Isekai. And I, I revisited it actually when I was sick back in Germany because I was like out with influenza for like 10 days. I was like, I'm, I was just watching a lot of anime. I was like, all right, I'll give this an actual try. And then I think it was like around maybe like basically when they kind of get scattered by that like big magic and they start going on that journey where I slowly, yeah. I was like, like oh, I kind of get it now. It was kind of like, it was like make you hate the protagonist. And then we work kind of from the bottom up person. Like in this isekai, it's basically where usually you have no powers and then immediately you get really strong. Like in this case, it was a yeah, had the powers, but then he had like no personality or like shit personality and needs to work his way out of that. And I, I then at that point, I kind of under started to understand why people really praised this anime. And I'm curious if you had a similar experience where at some point... Like, first of all, how far in did you get? Because there is a second season that's been out. To what point did you watch? And also, did you have that same experience where at some point you kind of had this, like, aha moment and then you actually really, like, started vibing with it? I got through all of season one. I didn't have time for season two. Uh, Sophie and I have just watched this over the last week. Uh, so I did about three, four, sometimes like five episodes a day, depending on the day. I think confusing is a great word, Manu, because regardless of everything else I'm about to say after this statement I'm about to say, I do think it is an above average isekai. And the reason why that is, is because it's not just being transported into a fantasy land and forgetting about like your life before. In this series, the main character, Rudy S. Or, do we ever know his real name, actually? Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't think we know his real name, actually, yeah. Yeah. The main character really has to confront, like, his past, his previous life. And I think the best isekai are the ones where the fantasy realm sort of teaches you about your mistakes and gives you a chance to redo them in this new world. That I really like about it. With that said, 
I think that pretty much every scene in this entire show fits very cleanly into one of two boxes. There's box A, where when the author really wants to, he can write a brilliant, intriguing, engaging plot with something to say. And then there's box B, where the author is living out their sexual fantasies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that's fair enough. I think it doesn't help that that's all it is for the first 10 ish episodes. It's like half of season one. I was completely lulled into thinking, this is just a pervert anime. And it's like, it's perverted <laughs> yeah. for so many reasons. It's like there's lollicon, there's like furries, there's like, like, you know, there's like a little bit of incest. It's like, I was thinking this this mangaka really just wanted to tick all the boxes for everybody's kinks. And that's all <laughs> I was thinking. I felt very uncomfortable watching it for an, about the first 10 episodes until the big mana. Um, the journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The calamity. And I just have to ask, why not deal with Start that a that little earlier? bit earlier? <laughs> yeah, like, and not do a yeah. full 10 episodes of just straight up soft porn. So it's kind of weird because the impression I get is like kind of what Liam said, where kind of the message is, I mean, it's like two things. He needs to overcome his trauma of being bullied. And then like, because he what like, sure, does that, ha does that come up in the first season or the second that he's basically been like strapped to like the yeah. gates of the school naked and everything? It comes up in the first season twice, you see. Yes, yes. And so like, that's his trauma. He basically becomes the hikomori so shut in he never leaves his room like um super traumatized by this and i guess then he kind of becomes that like insecure arrogance like nerd in a way like otaku without like you know like no real contact any real women he and eventually he gets kicked out hit by a truck and here we are yes exactly and so like the the lesson that he's supposed to learn throughout the story is kind of like overcome that trauma but also actually like appreciate the people around him and like you know life itself and so in a way kind of the perverted side of his is kind of part of that persona which he's su supposed to like let go of but at the same time as you say Liam the author kind of celebrates it at the same time in a really weird way <laughs> it feels very <laughs> conflicting because I get the message and I absolutely believe that it's okay to have a protagonist with problematic traits regardless of what those problems are and there's a lot of them in this so long as that's used to tell the story and to have the character learn and grow which does happen because I think like this series is heavily focused on sex there are several scenes where a woman's being gangbanged by demons in the second half of the show <laughs> but there is one really good moment in my opinion at the end we're going to disregard the fact that they're children for a second here but towards the end of the series where Rudius and Eris actually, you know, do the sex, that was a really good scene because it's sort of, okay, no, there's actually one thing that made it really weird, but it sort of took away all of the perversion around sex and it was just two people connecting, like with the exception of when she whispered that she wanted to make kittens. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and when she meowed, yes. Yeah, and when she meowed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I get what you mean by that. Maybe the problem that I found with his perversion, though, was that it's almost like it's just a character quirk because he never really fully grows out of it. And even in the second part, his yes, he deals with it maybe better, but every chance he gets, he'll try something. And it's not Actually, just now him. that you guys bring that up, I'm kind of like now I because I was kind of like maybe it wasn't necessary to watch the second season. But now that you guys bring it up, maybe it would have been necessary because... The, the second season, kind of like after he has his first time with basically the, with the woman he, lo he loves, like the entire second season is basically him having, or, or girl, <laughs> I mean, they're both kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's what, like 11 at that point? And she's like... But, yeah. I mean, this is set in like 13. middle ages, right? I think that is, yeah. I think that's why they have a little bit more license. I think Rudy says something like Paul, his dad, is maybe about 30 at that time when Rudy is like 10 or 11. So which means that, you know, they obviously had kids when they were late teens, early 20s. Even if yeah. not, it's very obviously set in a world where like children having sex at extremely young ages is just socially accepted. There are a lot of moments in the series like <laughs> when I think... Um, um, Philip, uh, Lord Philip, like, <laughs> firstly offers to, like, tie Eris up and, you know, put her in Rudy's mm. bedroom. But he also mm. says, you know, if you do anything, use a condom to this, like, nine-year-old child. Also, when they visit Roxy's parents or when they run into them, 
Like, Roxy's mother seems to think that Rudius is Roxy's lover. Mm, like, yeah. that just seems to be, like, a, a standard that, that can happen in this world. But then Roxy is, like, super old, right? She's, like, in her 60s or something, though. No? Yeah, she just looks young. I mean, again, coming back to that, because, I mean, I'm going to spoil a little bit. In like, I hope that's okay Gasp. for you guys for the second season. Basically, <laughs> yes, basically he, like, the kickoff is that he's super heartbroken. You know, that he's been left alone, basically, after finally, you know, being vulnerable. Yeah. One night standard by Eris. Yes. And then basically, the, the entire second season is kind of him not getting to grips, like, having to get, get to grips with that. But also, like, kind of his sex quirk has been reduced to him having, like, crippling, like, erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> Which, at, at his age, I'm surprised there's function at all. Basically, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, at his age, that's the perfect time to be, no? It's just more like random functioning at all isn't, stages. Yeah, isn't that isn't that the age where it really yeah. starts? <laughs> How old is Rudius by the end of the series? Because you're probably correct. You're probably correct. But he's definitely like eight or nine when this whole thing begins. Like when he first meets I Eris. think he's around 12 or, or something now. I think he's like 12 or 13. Well, at the end of but season one. But also he one. does have the mind of like a 30 something year and old. And that so. is really the big problem. Yeah, that, that's the <laughs> crux it's of it, like, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> because to me it feels like, when I say a lot of it feels like the author living out their sexual fantasies, it's like you've got to really do some mental gymnastics to sort of get to the end goal of, I want to fuck kids. And so what you've got to do, okay, I'm in this <laughs> whole other world, but and my mind is in yeah. the body of a child. So it's all okay. And it's okay for kids to have sex and everything's okay. Like you've got to jump through so many hoops to like get to all of the scenes that happen in this show. Yeah, I know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because like even in the second season, it kind of like his character. So again, I'm going to spoil a little bit because I'm, I'm not sure if you guys <laughs> want to watch the second season. But basically is like, he he falls in love with like he re meet like he grows up. I'm, I'm I think he's like at the end of the second season he's maybe like 15, 16 or something. I'm guessing he runs into Sylphie again because she's right at the end. Exactly, and then basically like he had like that's his second time. He's like he leapfrogging has it with her, girlfriends. which is like fine. Well, but basically he wants to marry. Like he is like fully in love with her. Like he like he wants to marry her at the end of like the part where the anime is right now. And that's like I don't know what happens after that in the story, but. That's kind of like, so basically he goes from like, wants to fuck everything. He probably leapfrogs again. I don't, I mean, I'm gonna assume, but basically like his character arc is a little bit like, like the entire second season so far has been basically, oh, like you've just been like horny, don't do that. You you need like love again. Yeah, but like he's, he's gonna leapfrog again. Like I've not seen the second season. I don't know anything about the future, but all I know is that every woman slash mostly girl in this series is pretty much in love with Rudius or has something for him. Like, they're either speaking to Rudius at any given time or about him. Like, every piece of female focus is directed into this black hole of a, of a main character. I mean, isn't that the Isekai tick box harem? Yeah. It is, yes. Yeah. This is an it absolute is. harem. They're not all around him at the same time, which I think makes it tolerable because he's not dealing with, you know, multiple presences. But it is definitely a harm. Yeah, you'd imagine maybe season three will have to deal with him going through Roxy. And now he's in love with Roxy and Roxy's going to be in love with him. I reckon it'll be the maid girl. Like the really, like his half sister. Like that is absolutely happening. It... No. Guaranteed no. that's what she set up for. No, no, no. You're no. Like, no. Yes. No. Yes. I didn't get 100 percent. So? I would I would bet so many units of currency on it. She not not like as she is. They're like gonna grow up a bit and do it. They do it. I reckon. No. I reckon that's how it's gonna go. How could you have watched 23 episodes of this show and go, no, they wouldn't do that. Not with children. They wouldn't go incest. But no, it's just I don't that, think so. they I didn't get that an feeling, entire though. episode I'm looking it up. building the idea of him being a good brother to her. I would be surprised because I feel like wasn't it set up that like his entire thing is like actually growing to love his family as family? Like that's something he needs to do. I, I just I do not trust this kind of series to set up a half sister and not go incest. I just do not trust it. <laughs> oh no, Liam, no, don't ruin this for me. Uh, <laughs> I thought like personally that was one of like the, the better parts of the series where I did feel like part of it was him like coming to grasp 
like he didn't really see them as family until like later in the story where he's kind of like no you're actually like my dad you know when he re-meets his dad on his travels and everything and he kind of like actually is like a big brother and when he like then makes it his mission to like find his mom and stuff like because before that you kind of get the feeling he's kind of yeah he's with these people but he doesn't really see them as family in that sense yeah no i agree um although he still doesn't call them dad and mom he still refers he's still no, very he detached paul I, well, I mean Anderson. obviously when he talks to them but in his brain when he's narrating oh. it's always paul and is it yeah. zenith and it does still feel a little detached in my opinion. But I, I think there is definitely progress there. Unless he actually fucks his half-sister, then there is no progress. <laughs> I mean, they spent an entire episode about him being a good brother to her. I can, what I can say is that the half-sister definitely wants him. Mm. Wait, I don't isn't know that the vibe are, that you got watching? Or is in No, that's what I'm reading what off reading. her page on the wiki. Oh. Mm. Okay. Apparently there's well, a... of course. Of course she wants <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil it for Manu, but there's some weird shit coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not su I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Oh, God. Uh. Okay, let me, let me ask a different question then. The first thing that I kind of thought, like, after, like, five episodes or something... And, like, let me know if you can relate to this or not. I was like, this is kind of like Sanji, but this author shows us more than Oda is showing us, kind of, of Sanji. Does that make sense? This kind of, like, overtly pervertedness, like, where you're kind of like, if you had, like, a more, like, uh, you know, mature version of One Piece, then it would be, like, Sanji actually, like, peeping on, you know, like, the girls and stuff like that. I mean, he has done that. Yes. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to be... I don't want to be too apologetic when it comes to Sanji, because I don't... Because he does do a lot <laughs> of questionable apologist. things. Um, but... Fucking Sanji! <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want to put them in the same, like, field. If I was to pick a pervy character, like he probably reminded me of, um, what is it, Minota uh, from My Hero Academia, the bubblehead dude, the purple bubblehead uh, guy. Minota? Um, yeah, Minota. Minota. It's been so long since I've watched My Hero, I can't remember the characters. Yeah, it was a really uh, small one. I, I agree one. with your, yeah. Yeah, the like. Rape it's, oh, it's the one it, with the sticky thingy. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. bubble, like the boba. Oh, bubbles. yeah, the per the pervy character with the sticky balls. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's that one. Yeah, if he was the main <laughs> character with a better power. Yeah, right. He's quite tiny as well, so it's very appropriate. But yeah, I mean, overall, I guess like my overall judgment was also similar with what you. I think very similar. To what, to what you said, Liam, where I feel like the Isek, like, it does a lot of things way better than others. It's, it's basically what you said, where, like, the author clearly has, like, really good writing talent and, like, clearly, if he wants to, can write a really good story. I guarantee you, like, this was written, like, between masturbation sessions. <laughs> yeah! Like, every it's like great piece of plot happens clarity. in post-nut clarity, 100%. <laughs> And then it builds up again and the yeah. author's like, oh, I'm horny again. Let's write through this. And it just goes up yeah. and down, yeah. up and down like that. There's actually a word in Japanese for post nut clarity. It's kenja modo, which is like like sage mode, basically what Naruto <laughs> <Sage> has. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just need to enter sage mode. <laughs> yeah. Which is why, you know, that, like, that's that probably a euphemism. Yeah, it's a euphemism in Naruto when he meditates. Right. Meditates. That is such, <laughs> the such a better way to put it than post nut clarity. I love it. It will always be sage mode from here on out. Yeah. Sage mode. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah, it's, it's kind of weird because as you say, like you have these like, you have like whole episodes that are like such fantastic like fantasy storytelling and then there's just like, nope, this, this has been too, too good for too long. <laughs> Throw something in there. I don't even hate the idea of having like some realistic sex stuff or something in an anime like you have like in movies or TV shows, but just like don't make it weird, right? Anime is often far too prudish when it comes to sex. It was really interesting to step into a world where like sex is an accepted thing that happens. It just would have been nicer when it, like, if it hadn't been with like children. <laughs> but, yeah. But the it, concept in itself, it, I thought, was really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it would be great if, like, we did the whole thing, but they were older, you know? And I guess the story gets, because, I mean, you just looked it up, Liam. Like, I think the way it's been explained to me is that you kind of follow him through his life, and I assume he just, like, obviously at some point is an adult. In the story, I think. How but far along is the story? I don't know. I have no idea. 
Is it done? I, even? No I don't even know. It's finished. It does feel sort of like Vinland Saga yes, in that it's way. Finished. The mm. idea of just like following him. Okay, it is finished. In this Nordic based country. How old is he when um at the end of the story? So it ends with him at age 74, but that might be like a flash forward or something. I'm not sure. I guess this is a question more for you, Manu, seeing as you've actually watched mm. season two. Do they deal with sort of like why he's in this world at all? Oh yeah. Any more about the man god? Yeah, yeah that's the only guy. That's the the god. Is I think the only like hint that's a little bit like uh, why he might. But I think the god also says, if I remember correctly, and didn't the god say he was not the one who put him there? I feel like wasn't yeah, there like a line or something? Too. Yeah, that he's not responsible that. for him, like, being in that world. That, like, one thing that they deal with is that he meets... So, basically, he goes to the, to the wizard school that has been set up in season one, right? And to be oh, fair, like, finally. the season, the second season is a lot... Yeah, he's a little bit, like... It's, it's a lot slower. It doesn't have this, like, nice journey where you see... Because the world that you see is... I fucking love, by the way, that the opening is just, like, landscape shots and, like, stuff happening. Yes. I, mm. I love that uh, so much. This series has yeah. fantastic openings, and sometimes it plays over dialogue as well. It's not always landscape stuff. It's just over yeah. a scene. It's such a good way to do an opening, so simple and effective. And sometimes they do and closings And let's, let's like it breathe well. so much. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes it's even, like, a, like a time like time skip thing where like they show like a process or something so i, I mm. liked it a lot but yeah he goes to the magic school and he meets like um he basically like one of the teachers there is the girl that was with the the dude who killed them all the uh, dragon yep. guy yep 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 so uh, that girl is um, there with the mask the girl who convinced mm. him to save them if i recall yeah yeah yes and then that girl turns out is also japanese only name that it, she was his not name reincarnated. is her name is like nana hoshi like seven star. Yeah. So she was she was not reincarnated, but she was like summoned into the world, and that was probably what caused that like crazy event where everyone was like scattered when she was like summoned to that world. But like basically, he only finds out that they're both different. So she was summoned. He was kind of re like born into this into this world. So it's it's kind of explain like I guess it's it's proven that you can be summoned from it from like the actual world into that world, but. How it happened to him is still like unclear, I guess, at that point. As long as it's like explored a little bit, because I did find it odd that it was just sort of um, like it was like a big mystery that wasn't talked about at all. Or even like the mana, like the mana was just like it was just a thing. It's like, is it because we're in a fantasy world? We're supposed to just accept that shit like this happens. And then and he like it's I mean, I mean, yeah, like the whole episode about his father being angry at him um, and taking it too hard when he was like a, an 11 year old boy. I understood that. But it's like at the same time, like, yeah, how the hell did you not think about like we were all transported? I wonder what happened to the rest of the civilization. I, I read that <laughs> completely differently. Like if I'm an 11 year old child being transported, no. I'm just happy to know that my kid's okay. Oh, sorry, if I'm the parent of an 11-year-old child, I don't immediately go, so have you been looking for your mother and your sisters and everyone? Did you assume that it happened to everyone else and not just you? Like, how was he supposed to know that anyone else had been transported other than him? They were like at the ground zero of the event. How could they have known? Like, Paul is such a cunt. There are two moments in this show that made me genuinely angry, and that is one of them. I mean, in general, I don't think Paul's a good father. Like, and especially <laughs> in this like, moment, I, I, where he's like upset at his 11 year old child for surviving. <laughs> I think when Rudy was five years old, Paul was giving him sex tips. <laughs> yeah, he was. So like, <laughs> Paul is treating Rudy like he's a 34-year-old, which we know he is mentally. But Paul doesn't know this. He's still a kid. He was sent to the demon continent. Paul's never been to the demon continent. Like I said, I'm not siding with Paul, but just Bons. to be devil's advocate, um, Rudy has, from birth, acted like a very mature child. Like he was reasoning with... With Paul whenever they had an argument I'm not I'm not like I can understand where Paul is coming from because the guy was he depressed. behaves like an adult like, yeah, yeah yeah he's always had an adult child and then so he's coming out of this like you know severe alcoholism and then I think he's just I, like he probably just hasn't been able to process his emotions narratively how is Rudy supposed to know that any of that happened though like as opposed to an isolated incident where it was just him I think he was worried 
about Rudy, but then when he saw that, like, basically Rudy told him that he just had this, like, great adventure, he was like, mm. oh, but we all, like, suffered, and you've just been, like, off. I think that's what made him angry, right? Where he was like, oh, you've just been, like, goofing off while I was, like, searching for the rest of your, like, for all of you, basically. And then mm. I think it's, like, the 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 other guy who was traveling with Rudy who was like, oh, no, have you, like, thought about, like, him maybe not wanting to, you know, give you any more, like, worries about everything he's been to? Yeah. I mean, again, Fuck Paul's off, a Paul. bad father. Oh. <laughs> He's a shit father. Yeah. He's yeah. really good at fathering. Terrible father, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very potent. <laughs> the Paul thing. That was one of the two things that made me genuinely angry. The other one was when Roxy's party crosses paths with Rudius's party at the docks and they walk right past each oh. other. And Roxy, like, notices yeah. that something is strange. And despite the fact that her mission is to look for Paul's family, she doesn't bother to just go, <laughs> hey, who are you? And even if it's not Rudy, it's like, huh, oh, my mistake. She's like, she just doesn't. She just keeps walking. That infuriated me. And then they had the goal, the goal! <laughs> to make them cross paths again in the alleyway. <laughs> that sort of thing can be done really well and like is really clever. Oh, you know, the winds of fate, oh, blah, 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 blah. It was not done cleverly here. It was bullshit and I hated the anime when I did that. I was like, how fucking dare you feed me this? Wow, I didn't realize. Um, Eat my hopes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the... <laughs> I, I, I can't say that I felt about it that deeply, to be honest. <laughs> no, I mean, I get I get what you're saying. I was like, yeah. oh, come on. They're just going to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Come on. But... No, but it would be one thing if she didn't notice, but she went, huh? And saw something weird and then just didn't follow up. Like, the fuck? This is your whole mission to follow up. But was she was she looking at Rudy? Like, what is that what had caught her eye? I always interpreted it as like, maybe it might be um, Rougied. Rujied, the spurred, and maybe the fact that he's isn't he wearing a charm that basically she gave to Rudy? Yeah, and maybe that's a clue. Mm. This charm that I gave this boy, maybe, but, maybe it's just, I could just, but it's just, <laughs> but like She's that like, charm oh, is like what for a her people, right? At it's the like, very least, like start up a conversation. Hers. Yeah, but obviously, uh, Rujied or Rujied, I I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's obviously not one of their people because he's not a lolly. So maybe let's go over and you know, tell the story. Oh, who did, from my tribe did you? Rudius! Oh my God! I was just the looking for you. Are you? Are you part of the lowly tribe? No. Nope. She, okay. she had absolutely no <laughs> inquisitive nature, and her whole mission was to find information and people. And apart from the awkward as fuck reunion with her parents, like the whole Roxy storyline equated to nothing there were a couple of gangbangs there was a drinking contest and I, I feel like that whole part was just a waste of time i actually felt really emotional with her reunion with her parents true i thought that was a really good scene actually what when she went inside the house said hey mum and dad and then walked out i'm leaving no the second half no she yeah, didn't walk out there was a hug there was a hug no there were she was hugs, like she, there were tears dude what yeah. do you mean that was a hug? There was like a whole like process of her realizing that her parents didn't hate her. Yeah, it was like a 50-year-old yeah. misunderstanding. Great. That's yeah. great if she's the main character. I don't care. But she care. didn't meet them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. We have other things to be doing. <laughs> One thing I will say, like, I really liked about, about um, like, a little detail, which I feel like the, the hair color stuff that's always, like, blown over in anime. I really like that in this case, oh, the green hair means he's from the bad tribe, right? And then he actually decides to shave his head, and I was like, which thank you that's started the thing. to you make the curse fade away like <laughs> yeah because laplace had green hair as well which doesn't actually make any sense um in my brain i have no idea what that means but yes <laughs> it was because like laplace cursed the spears like that was his thing and so was laplace the good guy though bad he's said to be the bad guy that everyone teamed up to defeat he was the one who was beaten. Okay. Like long ago, right? I thought it was the one that was living up in the sky the sky island. Now that's the dragon god. I forget his name if yeah. he has a name. Is that the dragon god? No, the dragon god was the Ohed no, that we just met. Wonders. Yeah, the one that yeah. just 
like are they not the same up. person? I thought they were the same people. Who was the one in the sky? He's just like a dude who lives in the sky. Yeah, just That's another just, god. He's not just a dude. He has <laughs> yeah, like minions like and shit. Because there's many. There's like these like and nine he was like or said seven... to have beaten Laplace, and I I swore that was the dragon guy. No, because if it was the dragon god, surely they would have made a bit more of a fuss. No, I don't think it was. I mean, didn't. Like I don't we think it because was we either. see his floating ship. But the dragon god is one of the strong ones. Yes. I mean all the gods are gods, right? Like they're gods for a reason. But like I I, I swear we Orsted, that's his name, Orsted. The dragon. <laughs> was Orsted the one that beat Laplace? Orsted was the one so. who put a hole in Rudius. Yes. Oh, that was the yes. dragon guy. Yeah, that's so, the dragon. So god. who was who was the one with the floating fortress in the sky then? That's another god, I think. Yeah, it's a different god. Because there's like isn't there like nine tell, of them or something? Yeah. Or seven? Seven, tell I think. Me. Seven. Because I could have sworn it was the same dude. And the one that the one of the servants came down. Down right before the mana accident happened and fought with Ghislaine, right? Oh, per Perugius, Perugius. Yes. Perugius. The floating okay. city was like handled so funnily because it's basically like he sees it and then it's basically like, don't worry about it. Like, you're still level five. This is like, worry about this when you're level 80 or something <laughs> was like the vibe. <laughs> that guy with the floating In my city defense, in Perugius yeah. is also a weird looking old man. <laughs> all right. Yeah. My Anyways, mistake. to bring things back to our all favorite topic. Uh, One Piece. <laughs> so I'm actually, so I wanted to share something with you because I really li loved it. So I'm actually wearing the jersey today of like my soccer club or football. I can say football. What do you guys say in Australia? Soccer? We used to say soccer. Uh, it's both. Football. Oh, nice. So yeah, this is from Bayern Munich who just signed a new French player. And they oh, announced it this. with the following tweet. <laughs> I saw this. <laughs> Which I really appreciate it. And that... Yes, and then they had like the whole, the whole like wanted poster, and then they had even like the Gear 5 thing, where was that? They had like a lot of like a Gear 5 like references. In, Controversial like, opinion. Here. Yeah. I think his wanted poster looks better than the live action Luffy wanted poster. Yeah, it does! <laughs> I know! Actually, I think he would have made a really good Luffy too. <laughs> like genuinely, I, I love the um the depth of the image and it just looks like natural. I think the straw hat looks better than the live action straw hat, or is that the same one? I feel like this one looks so much better for some reason. It definitely it, looks it's less It's prop. wider. It does, and it's not like so yellow. Um, yeah. Which I get It's so much that the actual straw hat in the series is yellow, but in the in yeah. the live action, it looks like a prop. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. This one just he, feels so much more balanced. For he some looks reason, like maybe, he's like, nah, man, don't take my photo. He looks like he's just having a good time as opposed to like the manic live action yeah. Luffy that's just doing it to recreate the poster. The sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really love this. Like the, the, the first shot was also just really good. Like, and that went like super viral, right? That has like 153,000 likes. <laughs> just like nuts. Oh shit, he is doing the gear, the whole gear thing. Mm. Man, what a world we live in. So yeah, that made me <laughs> made me really happy. It's like talk about synchronicity, right? Like my favorite football club and One Piece. Love this. See, this is awkward now because, you know, it becomes like in any given sport, first team to claim One Piece. And then if another team wants it, they got to fight for it. Yeah. Like fuck fuck you, yeah. <laughs> I'll just take fucking Naruto then. <laughs> yeah, Fine. go go take Boruto. Yeah. Right? No, what do you mean we get stuck with Bleach? Yeah, 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 yeah. Really, really sick. Um, I don't know. That made me just really happy seeing it. It's it's well produced. It's fun. I like it. Yeah, it is hmm. very well done. And they did like the all the like uh, I think the Gear Five poses from the anime also. And then they did like instead of doing the Gear Five like with the little. Uh, you know, colors, the color flames, they did it with his name, which was like cool too. Well, that was really well produced. Mm. Very nice. What does Japan say about copyright in that sense though? I'm curious. <laughs> it's too big, I think. I think, I feel like when it's something like this, it's another reputable, you know, mm. showing love. It's no, like- of course, of course. <laughs> but it's yeah. it's just when us um, small, <laughs> small fries. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not just the, like straw hat, right? Like they've got like the haki going, they've got the flame with the, like that's a full um 
Like, if they wanted to, they could, but I don't think they would. Like, why would you want to? It's just, it's free marketing for them. Oh, it's it's perfect. Yeah. 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 A I mean, rare yeah, football so cool. dub. Love, and that photo that, that went, went, like, super viral, that's just, like, such a nice shot with the straw hat. Like, such a nice recreation there. It's. it's I would honestly love like to get too. my hands on that straw hat because it looks so nice. Like, the, <laughs> the close-up of, like, how they wove the straw hat looks so good. No, it's good stuff. I, I think the live action should be taking notes from... What, the Barcelona Football Club? Bayern. Bayern I, I don't, German, uh, right? German. That's my hometown, my friend. Yeah. Bayern. That's where I'm from. Three layers of um, relatability for Manu. It's like this was a this it was has, made for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I, I came when I saw this, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he entered sage mode. Sage I mode. entered sage mode afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> afterwards, yes. There are prerequisites to activate sage mode. Sorry for the interruption. I just needed to to share this because it made me very happy. Was there like did you guys have other thoughts on um on Mushoku Tensei. I guess I have a question for Liam. Oh, go yeah, go for yeah. it. Will you continue with season two? No, I don't think it's gripped me enough to go. And certainly not after hearing Manu speak about it in such an underwhelming way. I, I feel pretty... <laughs> like, it, like pretty season bad. one gripped me enough. Like, I felt pretty, like, hooked after season one. And then I felt like season two just, like, took away that entire journey, like, world. Like, exploring that world, which I enjoyed so much. Like, traveling around, meeting all those, like, people and stuff. Which, which I thought was, like, what really hooked me. This might be interesting. Like, all of the sex stuff aside... What hooked me most about this series was actually that first part before the journey started, when we were following Rudius, like, really? learning to become a mage and, like, consistently getting better and better at spells and, like, uh, getting to a then different Then you might class. like the second part more. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> and then the adventure starts, and I feel like Rudius doesn't make any progress. Like, he gets the demon's eye, we see him cast a few spells, but, like, we kind of forget his journey to become a mage, or, like, his journey of improvement. And it becomes more about the people around him, I feel. Yeah, and like, as an isekai enjoyer, that's not okay for Liam if the character doesn't level up. On the well, here's the thing. <laughs> like, no, as I, 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 said, get, all, I get what you're saying. I all of saying. the characters around Rudius are always talking about Rudius. Which means that I, as a viewer, don't care about any of the other characters because all of their focus is on him. Like, that's where the action is, no matter who the character is. So if he's not on screen, everyone should be asking, and they do ask, where's Rudius? Which actually, um, I have to say, it was very bizarre to end the season with a sort of like a um, flashback to what happened with Eris when um, oh, she yeah, defeated when she that went goblin. To goblins. I, yeah, yeah, like why was that the last episode of the season? Like make it a bonus episode or something. I was very I feel like it might that. have been a that's bonus true, episode that that's just listed as season one because it is like mm. a, like 23 felt like the proper It feels ending. like that. Yeah. But then they make it seem like there's some sort of mystery involved as well with that or the other mage that's jealous of Rudius now. Yeah, I do know that they do that sometimes. I feel like they did the same in like, I'm not sure if you guys watched that Isekai, like uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I never watched I it. I watched, I okay. almost got so, to the like end of that, the first season. <laughs> so basically at the end of the first season, like, there's like also like a really weird episode that had like there's the last episode and then there's the last last episode, which is exactly the same. It's basically... A completely different character doing a completely different thing kind of setting up something for like season three or so, like it's really weirdly disconnected from the rest of the story but it's kind of this like epilogue kind of thing that they did so that reminded me a lot of that which again weird timing but i guess if you leave it out like maybe later the story doesn't make sense because i know for the slime that's actually adapted from a light novel <clears throat> and in that sense it might make more sense because it's kind of like an epilogue so is this i believe yeah this one's a light novel too I think that might just be like something that got like weirdly translated over from like a text version where it's like maybe easier to have like epilogue and then it's like different scene that sets up something in the future. I know, for example, like the Wheel of Time or something does that too, where you have like kind of unrelated seeming epi like prologues and epilogues to each volume. So I could see that being yeah. the case that they try mm. to just translate that into. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah, I'm not a fan of things like that because it takes me a while to realize what's happening. I remember one time I was reading a book, this is years ago now, where they had um, sort of two parallel stories going on, but they were using exactly that. They were using the prologue of every chapter to talk about a story that was happening like in the past, but because it was so disconnected, 
I didn't understand it and I just kept skipping over that prologue <laughs> until like maybe the <laughs> last quarter of the book when the stories converged and I had zero idea what was going on and like that's when I have to be like oh fuck I have to reread the entire story. That will happen when you don't read half the book. <laughs> it, it was like the first page of just like every chapter and I think I was reading the book for school as well so I wasn't like super invested in it anyways. I was thinking the way I would treat that would be like a cover story uh, in one piece. It's just like your little thing and then you move on to yeah. the main chunk. It's interesting. I feel like what I wanted a lot more from this particular series was what we got in episode 23, where there was a lot more of seeing like how real life Rudius was you know, mm. mentally interacting with New World. Mm guy and a lot of the scenes i like most were the ones with the man god where he was in his previous body and sort of having to come to terms with the or like asking the meta questions of what was happening around him i want more of the real life stuff informing the isekai stuff i didn't mind that aspect of the man god scenes but i found that the man god interjecting and just giving very convenient answers and tips felt very much like a cop-out at a lot of those yeah, times. It felt like having tutorial mode on or something, yeah. Yeah, like it was just like, okay, let me just come and help you. Like, you know, I have no explanation of what I am. And they did seem quite arbitrary whenever he would pop up. I see what you're saying. Yeah. He's an intriguing presence, though. He adds like another, another layer of intrigue at the very least. And he is a direct connection. I guess, you know, being the man god, he's a connection to, like, Rudius's actual original form. I don't know if that's a thing. But I, I found those scenes more interesting than the ones where we were trying to look up Roxy's skirt or something. Or talking about, like, the holy <laughs> panty treasure. Or that one scene when Rudius is captured in, like, the fucking spell thing by the guy who said he was going to rape Roxy. Like, his brother comes in, the third prince, oh, yeah. and then they're, like, discussing the Roxy oh, figure yeah, yeah, for yeah. how many minutes? And, like, slowly stripping the figure as well and, like, talking about, like, the hidden moles and everything. Like, give me more man god stuff as opposed to that stuff. That was probably the author writing himself into the story. <laughs> 100%. You know that the author has hundreds of these figures that he upskirts on a daily basis. Again, no no shame on anyone who likes anime figurines. And I get, like, why you would want to have maybe- yeah. I get why, like, I understand why someone would want to have, like, a cool or, like, a sexy figurine, but I don't know, I've never had the urge to own one in a, in a weird way. I'm not sure, Liam, if you're, like, a big figurine person. I literally have a life-size life Zoro. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like that I understand again because that's that's funny, right? I think I think that's that's taking it to such an absurd level that it's almost like I I, I get that he is a centerpiece. He he makes a statement. <laughs> I never had the urge to like you know like buy a Luffy Yamato white beard figurine and have those in the back for some like I'd rather have a nice piece of artwork or something like a print. So I used to really love collecting figures until I realized that I don't have any space to display them. And also looking forward into thinking that even if I did have the space, how much do I gain from say having a wall of figures on display? It wasn't like an aesthetic that I was particularly keen on for the future and that's kind of what killed what what little figure collecting I did. I enjoy it quite a bit. This, this is one of the only figures that I have in my office and it's because it has value because I won it off Sophie and our editor. So this Shanks has meaning to me. <laughs> has emotional, emotional right. value. I would like to get to a stage where I have like a glass cabinet of a lot of just the figurines. You're gonna have fun in Japan. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I've told my sister she needs to, she's very good at the crane games, um, but she's gone through a bit of a dry spell lately, so I've told her she needs to be working on it again so that she can um, win me a lot of figurines. Makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what it, what it is. Like, I even, like, when I was in, uh, like, middle school or something, I used to, like, for, like, a year or so, like, not for a long time, but... For a while, I do, they like the there was like a Lord of the Rings version of the Warhammer like figurines that you paint yourself. I had those as well. Like, that yeah. was fun, I guess. Like if you paint them yourselves, I get like I can see it. I didn't find them as fun because the figures were very 
Warhammer 40k, I really like because the figures are generally quite chunky. Like you got your big bulky orcs, you got your chunko yeah, space marines. That. With the Lord of the Rings ones, I got really bored of them because they were all really skinny. I had a lot of elves and goblins and the fellowship and I don't know, they weren't as fun to paint as 40k stuff. Should have gotten like a Balrog or something. Mate, like that my dream, but uh, you know, at the time I was like you know, 15 and not making any money. I was lucky to have the elves. Dude, those were like, those were stupidly expensive, by the way. Like for that, that it was like plastic, those things were like insanely pricey. They still are. But then I guess you could say the same about like magic cards or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's like cardboard, <laughs> but they're insanely Apart expensive. Apart from a few things, I feel like 40K has an edge over magic in terms of the quantity of money it requires to be a hobby. Like, it's, it's absurd. I guess depends, depends. It depends on what you're after, yeah. If you go to the higher end of magic, then 100%, yeah. Yeah. I've, like, recently, like, uh, looked also, like, out of curiosity at, because uh, a lot of stores have trading cards in general, right? So when I look for magic stuff, I check out the One Piece section, and there's, like, cards that go for, like, a, easy, like, a thousand dollars at this point. Really? Which is, like, insane to me. Yeah. Well. I still don't know who actually plays One Piece. I, I know a few people who play, actually. <laughs> Really? I know a few mm. people. Um, okay. And it really, yeah, it takes me by surprise. Mm. But yeah, it is actually quite popular. Yeah, it, it Interesting. good on them. It's managed to become something. And I will say one, I mean, again, I think for me, the bigger problem is still the gameplay, which I think it just knowing something like magic, I think it just doesn't get there. But I will say I to give it like to have like some good feedback. Also, we talked right when it launched, we talked about our disappointment with the artwork and they definitely have strongly improved on that front. Have they? Like, Good. by a lot. They have, like, custom artwork now, the cards look really nice. Yeah, I don't know why they, like, either they were so eager, like, I, maybe they had just, like, the date and they needed to launch it and the cards were just not ready, or or maybe they heard the feedback. I don't I don't really understand, but, yeah, I mean, they do. They now look really nice, I will say. That's good, because it was incredibly disappointing yeah. getting those packs and just opening anime mm. screenshots. The first few. Hmm. <laughs> No, the new ones, the new ones are nice. But yeah, again, I'm just, I think if, if the game was actually good, like, I mean, you could always say, oh, just get into it for like the collector thing. But I feel like if you don't really resonate with yeah. the game itself. The game doesn't do it for me. Like, I, I just don't gel mm -hmm. with the mechanics. I just don't find it as fun as I've never tried Pokemon. playing, to be honest. Sophie, you've never tried the One Piece card game. Aren't you a One Piece in And influencer? you call yourself a... Joy girl. Yeah. I would not oh, yeah. I would not identify as a one piece influencer. That is <laughs> not the term that I would choose to describe myself. Are those the terms that you decide to um go by? Maybe one piece enthusiast? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, you've done sponsorships on your channel. That makes you an influencer. Uh but I've never been sponsored by One Piece related, right? Anything One Piece related. I so I can't be a One Piece influencer. I got sponsored by One Piece Odyssey. And you know what? One of the few sponsors who didn't pay me. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's... Actually, wow. I, shit. Yeah. yeah. You reckon they found yeah, out, like, this bastard uses spoiler materials, uses they non would have known, but They were probably they like, we can this. get away. <laughs> yeah, we can get away with not paying him, because what is he going to do? To be fair, <laughs> to, be fair to, um, to, uh, to Bandai Namco or whoever made the game, it was an agency. It was a middleman agency. So it was the agency who's fucked me over, not like the official game. Did they just ghost you at some point? Or? Yeah, I've been chasing them up for like a year and a half. Or when did One Piece Odyssey come out? Like this time last year or something? Like in January? A yeah. long time ago. Yeah. yeah, well I did something for it just before it launched. And like one of the this one of the only sponsors that have never paid me. Like this is not good old reliable raid. I miss raid because at least they had that in order. That's crazy. Um, actually, One Piece Odyssey, like, well, one of the agencies asked me about it too, and then they ghosted me after I responded. Yes, I'd be very keen. Wrong answer. But now hearing your story, I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad that I'm kind of glad that they ghosted me. I don't want you anyway. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Anyways, Sophie, do we have any members? We do. Any new members that we need to shout out? We should. Um, so, everybody say a big thank you to not Sherlock Holmes, not Mycroft mm. Holmes, or Enolia Holmes, but Lonnie Holmes. 
The Lonely Holmes. Holmes. Yes. Long Thank you. Lonely you Holmes. Saying. Thank you. Lonely Holmes. <laughs> the. <laughs> oh, is that? Oh, was that? Oh, is that it, the entire name? No, no, it's just Lonely Holmes. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That's, uh, that's, uh, okay. Like, that's a long username. Sophie otherwise. displaying her Thank literary you, Lonely knowledge Holmes. there. Yeah, I was like flex much. <laughs> Even through an in. Um, I, I don't know why I posed. I can't even. I can't even. I, my camera died um three minutes ago actually. So. Oh right. So we <laughs> Whenever you guys want to wrap this up. <laughs> great, great. You could have told us that. See that's oh my goodness. All right, Manu. What are we talking well, about next week? Thank you then very much, Lonnie. Uh, I'm so that's I'm right, my bleach. notes right now. It says here bleach. Mm, that's the one. Mm. Yeah, I, I think so. that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, bleach next week, guys. Great. We'll Catch see up. you then. Sophie's waving. I don't you know why I waved. I, I know. I, why did I wave? <laughs> <laughs>